Hi and welcome to this tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create this colorful packing list in Google Sheets with progress bars that calculate your packing progress as you start checking off items from the list. And if you don't want to create this yourself, but you just want to download the already made template, that's totally fine. I'm going to leave the link in the description where you can download this file completely for free. And now let's get into it. The very first thing we're going to do is to set a background color for our template. So click on the top left corner of the page to select the whole sheet and choose a color. Usually I like to choose a very light beige as the background color, so I think I'm going to go with this one, but feel free to choose any color you like. Next, we're going to resize the columns. First, select the columns from V to Z, right click on it, and select delete columns because we're not going to need them. Then select the remaining columns, so from A to U, right click on it, select resize columns, and we are going to set them to 33. Then select the columns B, F, J, N, and R, right click, select resize selected columns, and we are going to set them to 228. The next step is optional. Usually I like to use a picture as the header for the template. So first I'm going to set the size of the first row to 125. And then I'm going to merge the cells from B1 to T1 together. And to insert a picture, I'm going to go to insert and click on image. And I have here a header that I have created in Canva, but of course you don't need to insert any picture, so you can just leave this step out. Next, we are going to start formatting our tables. I'm going to select cells from B5 to D25 and create a border. I think I'm going to go with this border style and create an outer border first. Then select cells from B5 to D5 and also cells from B7 to D7 and create an outer border as well. And from cells B9 to D5, I'm going to set an outer border, but also an inner border. And for the cells from B10 to D25, I'm going to select an inner border. I'm going to choose the first border style and create an inner border. After that, I'm going to merge the cells from B5 to D5 and the cells from C7 to D7. Next, let's give a title to this category. So this is going to be my table for travel essentials. And here in row nine, let's name the columns. This is going to be items. Then this is where we're going to put the quantity. And this is where the checkboxes will go, so let's type a check mark. And then we are going to center everything. And let's also make it bigger and bolder. Then let's add some items here, so I will going to type some examples. And now we can start setting up our formulas. First, I'm gonna insert some checkboxes. To insert checkboxes, select the cells from D10 to D25, go to insert and select checkbox. And let's center the quantity and the checkboxes. To calculate your packing progress, we are going to combine a couple of different functions. First, we need to know how many items we have in our list. And to do that, we will going to use the count a function. The count a function allows you to calculate the number of cells in a range that are not empty. So it's going to be perfect in our case. In the cell D6, I'm gonna enter an equal sign, write count a, open parentheses, and then select the range from B10 to B25. Press enter and we get the result here. Next, we also want to calculate the number of checkboxes that are checked, but we only want to include the checkboxes 
where there is an item next to it. So we don't want to include any checkboxes where the row is empty. And the function that will do this for us is called count ifs. In cell C6, I'm going to do equal count ifs, open parentheses, and we're going to set our first argument. So the first argument is that we want to calculate the number of checkboxes that are checked. So select the cells from D10 until D25, then enter comma. And the criteria that it needs to meet is that it has to be true. Then enter comma again, and we're going to set our second argument. The second argument is that we only want to count in the range where we have an item in column B. So select cells from B10 to B25, then comma. And the criteria is that it has to have a value in it. It cannot be blank. So I'm going to do open quotation mark, then enter the greater than and less than symbols, close quotation mark, and close parentheses. Enter, and we will get the result here. And finally, to calculate our packing progress, it's very simple. We're going to simply divide the number of checked checkboxes by the number of items. And then format it as a percentage. Let's also center this and make it bold. And now we are going to create a progress bar. In cell B7, I'm going to do equals and sparkline. Then open parentheses. And now we have to choose our data, which is in cell C7. So click on C7, then comma. And then now we're going to open a curly bracket. Next, we have to specify the chart type we want. So write chart type in double quotes first. Then comma. And then write bar in double quotes because we would like to have a bar chart. Then I'm going to do a semicolon. And now we have to set a maximum value for the chart. And we want our maximum value to be 100%. So first write max in double quotes, then comma, and then type 100%. Then we're going to do another semicolon. And the final argument is going to be the color that we want for the bar. So to specify the color, first type color1 in double quotes, then comma. And then for now, I'm going to type red in double quotes, but we will change the color later. And finally, close the curly bracket and close parentheses. And we have our dynamic progress bar. The final feature we want to include in this table is that whenever we tick a checkbox, we want the item to be crossed out, and we can achieve that with conditional formatting. So we'll select cells from B10 to B25, then go to Format, and click on Conditional Formatting. Then click on this drop-down menu and select Custom Formula Is, so the very last option. Then we're going to do Equals. And the argument we're looking for is that whenever the value of column D is true, we want the column B to be strike through. Whenever we apply a conditional formatting rule to a range, we only have to set the formula for the very first row of the range, and the rest of the cells will adapt. So in this case, we're going to type D10, because the first row of our range is 10, and then equals true. And for the formatting, we're going to set the field color to none. And as for the text color, let's make it gray and strike through, and click on Done. And as you can see from now on, when I check a box, this column is grayed out. And now that our first table is almost finished, we can simply select the whole table and copy paste it to column F, J, N, and R, and also in cell B27 and F27. And now let's rename the tables. So this is going to be my table for electronics. And this is for clothes. This is going to be toiletries. And this is going to be miscellaneous. And lastly, this is safety and convenience. And finally, footwear. 
Here we go. I also would like to expand my tables in column J, N, and R just because I might need more items for these three categories. And to expand the tables, it's very simple. Just select one of the inner rows and then drag them all the way to row 47. And let's reset the borders. And because we have extended these tables, we also want to adjust the formulas a little bit in these three columns. So let's go to cell K6. And now orange is from L10 to L47. Let's also change it here. And also in cell L6. And now we can just simply copy paste these two cells into the second and third extended table. And the very last feature I would like to create is a progress bar on the top that calculates our overall packing progress. So let's resize our third row to 50. Then select cells C3 to E3 and merge them together. Then select cells from F3 to T3 and merge them together. And then let's set a border for this row. Here we go. And now in this first cell, we are going to write overall progress. And in this second cell, I'm going to calculate our overall packing progress by dividing the sum of checked checkboxes in all the tables by the sum of all items in all the tables. So we're going to do sum, then select cells C6, G6, K6, O6, S6, C28, and G28. And we're going to divide it by the sum of cells D6, H6, L6. P6, T6, D28, and H28. Close parentheses and enter. And let's format this as a percentage. And now let's center these two cells, make it bolder and bigger. And also let's align them to the middle. And finally, let's make another progress bar in this third cell. So we're going to do equals sparkline, open parentheses, and we're going to select our data, then comma, then enter a curly bracket, then enter chart type in double quotes, then comma, and then bar in double quotes, semicolon, and let's set our maximum value to 100%. Then semicolon again, and now let's set our color. But now, instead of typing the color's name in double quotes, I will insert a hex code here. Then close the curly brackets and close parentheses. To get the hex code of a color you want, just click on this fill color button and then on this plus sign. And if you drag this circle, you can see that the hex code on the bottom will change. So you can just choose any color you like and then copy paste its hex code to our formula. And now comes the fun part. We're going to color our tables. I'm just going to show you the first table and for the rest of the tables, you can apply the same method and choose any colors you like. So I'm going to select my first table except for row seven and choose a dark yellow color. For my progress bar, I would like to set the same dark yellow color. So to find out what the hex code is, I'm going to click on fill color, click on the plus sign, and then copy paste this hex code. So go to the formula and instead of red, we're going to copy paste the hex code. And now I'm going to select row six, eight, and then from row 10 to 25. Go to fill color again, and I'm just going to drag this circle to get a lighter yellow color. 
And finally, I would like to make these two numbers invisible. So I'm going to select them. And we're going to set the text color to the same light yellow color as for the background. And now I'm going to color the remaining tables the same way. So here are my finished tables. And to finish this template, we're going to just remove the grid lines. So go to View, Show, and click on Grid Lines. And that's it. So that's it for this video. If you would like to check the formulas or the hex codes, don't forget to grab your free copy from the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.